I'll get off from you afterwards. I'll put the plate out in the back. If I could for a few moments tonight, I really just want to look at, at that. I know it's not Sunday morning, and I focus typically Sunday morning. I know the presence of God is working and moving. I'm not segregating this to just men. Just give me a little bit, and you'll see the problems. Back to another when we get to the end. But I felt like I wanted to tonight, just the Spirit of God yearning and churning inside of me. I wanted to share some thoughts about fathers. And I wanted to look at the Word of God for a few minutes. If you would, Joshua chapter number one. Joshua chapter number one. I'm going to start with reading verse number one. The Bible says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, into the land which I will give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot that shall trod upon, I have given, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness of this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There there shall not any man be able to stand therefore before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not uh, fail thee, nor forsake thee. I mean, I, you know, I know that as we look around, we have men at different seasons of our life. But nonetheless, I need to tell you that on Father's Day, uh, this is your day. And you're really special in the lives of your children. Women, hang on. I'm going to get to you at the end. But let me just share to our men. You know, it's interesting that some years ago, they did a study. And on Mother's Day, they found that there were many calls made to moms. And uh, uh, it's, it's just immense. And they found that um, on Father's Day, it was a little different than on Mother's Day. There were many calls that were made. However, Brother David, most of them were collect calls. That was before the days of lots of cell phones. And so, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it's, it's interesting the importance dads have in the lives of their children. And once again, whether they're grown or whether they're still young, the lives are so important. And uh, it, 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 it has been proven through studies that children raised in a home without a father's influence are three times as likely to have behavioral, behavioral and psychological problems than those children that are raised in a home where there is a dad. And then in those homes where there are no dads, they found that for those who were admitted to psychiatric institutes, 75% of adolescents that were uh, 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 admitted to psychiatric institutes, 75% of them did not have a dad that was active in their home. And so, uh, 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 young men who their fathers died before they reached the age of adolescence, studies have proven that they have a difficult time transitioning when they go into marriage. And they found that of women uh, who, who felt that their fathers had abandoned them in their adulthood, they were more likely to be promiscuous in their behavior. So there are studies that have proven the importance of dads being actively involved in the lives of the children. 
And does that come as a surprise to us this, this evening? I would say that uh, 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 no, it doesn't come as a surprise because we know the Word of God and the system that God's Word lines up of how important that fathers are. And so here it is that we have just read about a man named Joshua. We're going to look at him for a few moments. And some of this I related to this morning. And I won't be redundant. But I want to share some things to those fathers out there. And the importance of, uh, of being a good dad. And then the importance of being a spiritual father to, to, to others. And moms, there's an important role for you to be spiritual mothers as well, even if you're not a mother. It's important for you to be spiritual mothers. Uh, Sister Clay spoke many years ago uh, 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 of a mother and like a mother. And I'll never forget that because she was a pastor's wife and life lessons taught her that she was a mom, but she was like a mother. And she had people that was like a mother to her. And so when we look at Joshua, you'll find that it's interesting. Uh, 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 the, the word comes to Joshua and God speaks to Joshua. And he says, Joshua, uh, uh, we know that he is the son of none. But God speaks and he says, uh, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan and all the people unto the land which I will give them even to the children of Israel. Here is God and He's speaking to Joshua and He's saying, Joshua, that guy who's been your spiritual father is dead. Moses was that spiritual father, Sister Dietrich, to Joshua. And Sister Rachel, it would be that Joshua would stay right there and right at that place if he thought, Brother Dennis, that Moses would come back. And so here it is that, that the voice of God, firm but yet caressing, says to a, a Joshua, Moses isn't coming. And he gives him a nudge. Now it's time to move forward. And uh, I have some things that I want for you. I know that you would love to see uh, Moses come back. And you'd love to see him march down Mount Levo. And uh, he loved you. Amen. And I know that you loved him. But it's time to move on. Thank God for fathers and spiritual fathers in our life. But there are still life to be lived for each of us, even when there's a passing of a father or a spiritual father. God gently nudges and says, go on. There's a place I want you to inhabit, even though it's difficult at this moment. I need to tell you on several levels this evening, and I said this this morning, and my heart is stirred. I know that there are times where we lose a loved one and it's difficult. But we must grieve and we must move on. We can't stay there spinning our wheels. Whether it's physical, whether it's spiritual. And then there are those who, and I'm not sure I want to say this here or at the end, so I may repeat this. Then there are those that get stuck in a trap of maybe not having the best childhood and they stay there and they can't move on when the grace of God says, I have moved you from the past into the present. I have blessed you and I have land for you. Now I want you to move on. It's time to get unstuck. And so we look at, at Joshua, and the Bible tells us that he was the son of Nun. Amen. And that's what we know about him. And it may be that Nun died somewhere in Egyptian slavery, that he died, and he never had the opportunity of coming out and seeing the miraculous things that the rest of the children of Israel see, and his son Joshua. And so here he is as he as possibly he comes out. There's something that we know about none, and, and even though he's very obscure, we know that most of the time an acorn doesn't fall far from the tree. And there it is that, that Joshua is this mighty, mighty man. And uh, uh, he has courage and he has loyalty and he has humility and he has respect. And, and certainly that must have been engrafted in him from his father. Most, 
most scholars would, would think that. And, and, and uh, his father probably had a very important part in naming him. When you look at Joshua, his father had actually named him Hoshea, which means this. It means salvation. Amen. It means salvation. And so to a Jewish father, perhaps he was longing, he was hoping that maybe his son would be the Messiah. Amen. And in some ways, Brother David, he really wasn't that far off because he did become a deliverer. He did become a leader. And he became a shadow, a type of Jesus Christ. And so as, as none gave him this name, what an amazing name that he gave to Joshua as he called him. And oh, she Amen. The characteristics, amen, of his father in giving that name, that name was such affirmation. Fathers give affirmation. Fathers should be affirmed. We'll talk more about that later. And then we see that Moses gives him the name of Joshua, which means the Lord is my salvation. And so. He unlocks the potential for Joshua that God can do it. Amen. That's the affirmation and the characteristics that we place within our children because we're faithful to God. I'm talking whether they're still at home or whether they're grown. Amen. You are speaking affirmation and things in their life that is godly. We need some men who will take on the responsibility of being spiritual fathers to some who don't have anyone to lead them and bring them affirmation and confirmation of godly things in their life. And so here it is as we look at Joshua. We, we, we know this. That uh, Joshua, he grew into a man and an amazing man. One of my favorite authors, and I, I read about him, and he's just, he's a great man. He's a pastor, and I just, I love reading his works. He's amazing. And on this Father's Day, he said, if there's something that I could do over again, he said, I would change things in my children, and I would bring them more affirmation in their life. There would be more praise, and there would be less correcting. And you may think that sounds crazy, but, but, but I'll get to the meat of why he said what he said, but bringing affirmation and bringing praise. Here it was, I want you to think about this, that, 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 that Joshua, this spiritual son of Moses, the affirmation that was brought to him, he was a man's man, he was a warrior, he was a leader of the army, and one day he was fighting against the Amalekites, and he looked up and, and he saw upon the rock, there was a spiritual daddy, there was, there was Moses, and Brother David, there was such affirmation as he looked up and he seen the hand of Moses in the air and he knew I can win the battle. The battle is great and God is with me and I know that there is victory in this battle and he looks up and all of a sudden the hands of Moses are down. Aaron and her aren't there and the disgruntlement that comes to him, there's no affirmation and he begins to lose the battle. I know God's in control but I'm telling you, here was a man that looked to a spiritual father and he saw deep affirmation when the hands of this man was lifted up. I, I, I need to tell you once again, amen, there are healthy characteristics that are given when we give affirmation and praise to our children. I'm not saying we don't correct. Yes, we must correct, amen, but we can't get into the place of correction, correction, correction without ever giving praise and affirmation. It is Erickson who wrote The Power of Praise and he does the different places of life. And he says, for children under seven, all you parents of children under seven, and maybe I'm just preaching to myself tonight, that's okay. <laughs> Sometimes we need to do that, right, Brother David? They say, for every 
for the first seven years of a child's life, they will hear seven rebukes to one praise. And that partly is because we're nurturing them, we're guiding them. I mean, you're, 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 you're telling them what's safe and what's unsafe, what's right and what's wrong, amen, what's good and what's bad, what's hot, what's cold. I mean, you're, you're telling them that. And so uh, in doing that, the seven rebukes to one praise. But sometimes uh, they, uh, Erickson says that we as parents get ourselves in such a rut of the rebuke that once they get past the, uh, the age of seven, that we're still stuck in that place. And what children need is the affirmation. Amen. They, they need the praise and not just all the correction all the time. So God help us. To be as the spiritual father uh, of Joshua was. Affirmation, praise. And what his physical father was. Even in the giving of his name. Affirmation and praise. That there is salvation. And Moses comes along and there is salvation in our Lord. The affirmation of that. Are we telling our children Jesus saves? Are we empowering them that with Jesus Christ all things are possible? Amen. And there's nothing that we cannot do through the grace and the power of God. We can live victorious. Amen. We can achieve our dreams and our goals. We can be overcomers. We can live a life that's above uh, any type of addiction, any type of uh, uh, immorality. Amen. We can live for God in a very ungodly culture. I'm talking about the importance that of affirmation. Say it again. Amen. Tell your children you love them. I'll tell you this, I'm not bragging on myself, but I love to tell my girls I love them. I tell them all they love them. And I don't care if they want to hear it or not. I'm going to talk again. I'm going to be their biggest fan, especially when it comes to godliness. Amen. Tell them again. Affirmation. Not only tell them again, but do it again. There's at least 30 times we read with Joshua's name that he is the son of Nun. And although we don't know much about Nun, he's in this obscurity. It's said again, Joshua, the son of Nun. I believe that sometimes we just need to do it again, dads. One person said this when the child read their diary. I went fishing with my son today. It was a day wasted. Love is spelled T I M E. We've got to say it and do it. Again. One more time, take another day. And then one more time. You know, I'm glad for my dad at the end of the day, work a full time job, farm, right at the end of the day, but the day we we'd jump on the back of the truck, and I know we can't do this nowadays. Jump on the back of the truck, and there we go, and I'm just going to one more time. One more time. Sometimes that's all children want, one more time. Our girls, was, we had this little plastic swimming pool for them to get wet in. And uh, so I was, they were splashing more water out than, than what they should have. So I was bringing buckets of water out today. And I was dumping it on uh, and gently and easy. And they'd say, do it again, Daddy, do it again. You know what, did they need more water in the pool? No, but guess what Daddy did? Just do it again. Sometimes we just need to do it again, Dad. Do it again. I'm trying to hurry. And then we need to show them again. In Exodus chapter number 24, verse number 12 and 13, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me unto the mountain and be there, and I will give thee uh, tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua. And Moses went up into the mountain. Of God. God didn't ask Moses to send Joshua. But Moses sent Joshua. 
rats and go with me. He did it because he wanted them. He did it because he wanted him to see God, know that God had worked and moved. You wonder why Joshua spent time lingering around the tabernacle? You know why? Because he had a spiritual father who took him to godly places. And we're going to go one more time before the presence of God. Joshua, come with me. And one day when Moses has gone off the scene, all of a sudden we see something amazing happen. This man is heartbroken. He lost his physical father. He lost his spiritual father. But when God says, okay, now Joshua, it's time for you to move. On, we find this man Joshua lingering around the tabernacle. We find him being uh, doing what God called him to do. Do you know why? Because he had a spiritual dad who did it one more time. We need some men in this church. Amen. Who will pray with other young men. Amen. We need some men in this church that will show others the way to God one more time. We'll lift our hand one more time. We'll pray one more time. We'll be faithful in church one more time. We'll clap our hands during song service. One more time, we will not get weary. You know what it does in the lives of others? It brings them to the place where now they'll linger in the presence of God when we're no longer here. It brings them to a place where they can trust God and move on, even if they have to move on alone. So linger and tarry. Do it one more time in the presence of God. Amen. Bring your children to the altar. Bring your grandchildren to the altar. Jesus is the friend. Sister Allen, if you come to the piano tonight. I couldn't help but not only think about Joshua, but to think about another mighty father whose name was Abraham. Can you shut this recording off? This is the